G'day everyone, welcome to Lubrication Explained. In this video we're going to talk about sulfated ash. We'll talk about how ash is formed, the role of ash in engine oil specifically, and what are the consequences of too much or too little ash. So when we talk about ash, um, what we want to really talk about is where does it kind of come from? So if you imagine you have a drop of oil and you burn it, okay, what's left over is a pile of ash. So it's a little bit like, you know, if you if you burn logs on a fire, what you end up with is, is a pile of ash. And that ash is, well, what is it made of? Most of, most of it is, is made up of additives. So detergents, dispersants, anti-wear and EP. And a few people will say, ah, not really EP. I'm using anti-wear and EP kind of interchangeably. But effectively, any of these uh, different additives that contain metals specifically um, will burn and the residue that's left over when they're burnt will be what we call sulfated ash. So for example, anti-wear, very common one is ZDDP. So zinc dialkyl diethiophosphate, when it burns, you get ash residue. Same with metal containing detergents and dispersants. Now, in some cases, especially with metal-free additives, you might hear them uh, called you know, ashless anti-wear or ashless dispersants. And what it means is that um, when you burn those, it does not create sulfated ash um, because they have removed the metals or they've changed the chemistry a little bit. So that's where ash kind of comes from. Now, when we talk about ash as it relates to engines, but of course there are ash in other lubricating oils as well, um, generally we focus kind of on, on two things, sort of like the pistons and the rings, um, as well as the valves. And I'm going to focus mostly on the valves today just because it's kind of easier to visualize. And that's probably where it has the most impact. So quick primer on um, valves as they relate to the engine. So of course you've got your inlet and exhaust valves. They consist of a valve stem and a valve head. Within the valve stem and the valve head, we've got a couple of other components. You've got the tip, there's the groove, you've got the fillet as well as the seat face and what we call the margin. So now we've got all the terms kind of out of the way and we can start to talk about the impact of ash. So if you have your valve, it is going to be centered by a valve guide. So as it moves up and down, the valve guide is what holds it in position. And then you've also got the valve seat, which is um, helping to stop the motion, if you like. And the motion of this I'm going to play this in real slow motion is to move down and up, right? Either to allow exhaust gases to come out of the engine or to allow, um, you know, the inlet side, right? Obviously the reverse of the exhaust. Now inlet and outlet valve design is slightly different, but we're just going to talk about a generic valve today. So if you speed up that motion, what you can see is that the, the face of the valve is constantly slamming into the valve seat. And each time it does that, there's kind of this impact. And so what we want to do is we want to cushion that impact with something. And that something is ash, right? So what we want is for that chalky um, ash residue to deposit itself gently on the face of the valve. And we want that layer to be quite thin and uniform because if it does so, it will cushion the blow and protect both the valve seat and the valve face from excessive wear. So what does that, what does that look like over time? Um, you know, a certain amount of ash can help prevent valve wear, but it can't prevent all valve wear, right? So it really just slows the rate of wear down. So over time, What's going to happen is that as we get wear of both the face and the seat, the profile and the fit of the profile is going to slightly change. And when you zoom back out again, what you'll see is that if we compare a used and a new valve in their seated positions, there's going to be a slight difference in the datum line, right? So if you, if you push it all the way back up into the seat and you look at where the top of the valve stem is, there'll be a difference. And the comparison of a new valve position 
with a current valve position is what we would call valve recession. So that's probably a term that you've heard a lot. And so having the correct amount of ash is one of the things that enables us to slow down valve recession. So again, you can't prevent it completely, but having the correct amount of ash helps us slow down that progression. Okay, so if you have too little ash, the valves will recess quite quickly, and that's undesirable. Now, there are other things that play into the rate of valve recession, right? It's the, the geometry of the profile, the force with which it's impacting into the valve seat, the metallurgy of both the valve seat and um, the valve face, right? So there's all these things that are playing into it. But the oil's role in preventing valve recession is usually by depositing a thin, uniform layer of ash on the face. All right, so what happens if you have too much ash? Well, a couple of bad things can happen. So let's say, for example, we had a, a non-uniform layer on, on the valve face, right? So what's gonna happen is that it's not able to fully seat uh, into the valve seat, and that can allow, on the other side, a, you know, let's say, for example, really hot engine exhaust gases to get past in a specific um, location. And if those gases continue to pass by in the same location, it's gonna basically cut uh, a groove into the valve, and that's what we call sometimes like valve torching. So you might have seen that on, on some valves. The other thing that can happen as well is that, you know, ash is really, um, they're kind of deposits in the engine. And so if you have a deposit that's anywhere inside the cylinder that is not desirable, those, those ash deposits remain hot. So they, they could be a couple of hundred degrees and they can be an ignition source, right? So um, you obviously want to control the ignition um, of your cylinder and generally it'll be, you know, in, in gas and petrol engines, it's, uh, um, it's direct, you know, it's, sorry, it's a uh, ignition um, which is controlled, right? And so you want that to be as controlled as possible. But if you have lots of deposits, you have lots of areas within the cylinder which could auto ignite, right? And present you with uh, an extra flame front and that can contribute to a lot of engine damage. The other thing that ash does downstream is if it ends up in the exhaust gases or too much of it is in the exhaust gases, it can start to clog up things like the DPF, right? So the diesel particulate filter. Um, so ash can clog those up and if it starts to exert a lot of back pressure, that can actually reduce your fuel economy as well. So too much ash is also undesirable. All right, that's been really quick. As usual, if you've got questions or comments, please leave them down below. Otherwise, this has been Lubrication Explained.